supporting, organizing, and sponsoring this program this year. Thank you very much. And I, I look out here, I see so many pleasant faces. I thank everybody who came. I can't call everybody by name, but thank you for showing up. Our drum ensemble, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And before I forget, we are presenting a wreath for Thomas Monday Peterson. This wreath will be put on his grave. Now at the end of the service, when we leave here, our royal police will be escorting everybody who wants to drive down, drive over to St. Peter's. No, we're not walking. <laughs> Everybody who wants to drive over, they want to provide police escort for us to escort us from here over to the church so that we can have a little brief ceremony and put the wreath on his grave. And thank you, Pastor Dickerson, for being my other hand, my other feet, my assistance, helping me out today. We want to give many, many thanks to the St. James AME Zion Church for donating this week for us today. <laughs> was the first African American to vote in not only the city, but the entire nation. He was the first African American to cast a vote those slaves were given the right to vote. That's what the 15th Amendment did. And of course it said men, but of course you know, women were right along. And um, we just don't want it to be forgotten. Amen. Amen. I don't know what to do. I thank you for your fill-in. Um, thank you. You know who says that? that those students that are in attendance that are not in their regular class, John, we said to him, please make certain that those students get tested on what they've heard today. Do y'all like that? Is that a good idea? No, they said. No. At this time, I bring to you John Dyke. He is the historian here in Perth Amboy. And he will present to us. Hey, thank you, Carol. Welcome to our event today, Thomas Monday Peterson Day. 152 years ago today. That's right, that's right. We are going to show a short eight minute documentary on Thomas Monday Peterson. And to the students, there will be no quiz. So just sit back and enjoy it. Uh, Christina, would you get the house lights, please? And Victor, would you? Uh, Victor Marshall, would you please show up those lights? Thank you, Victor. All right, Matt, go ahead and roll it. The House Assembly Speaker Craig Copeland is coming at this time. A man of great influence there in Trenton representing us. But if you take away a lesson, then take John's lesson. Yeah. Uh, then get out and vote. Get involved, please. Uh, don't get your news from TikTok. Uh, <laughs> pay attention to what's going on and make a difference. You can change the world. Just like Bob was fun to do this. Uh, you know, it's, it's fitting that the, the city joined together to celebrate uh, this great American uh, because of the incredible importance of what he did. What I really like about this individual that's coming is that he discovered the power beyond the vote. That's what we talk about a lot at the Citizens Campaign. I'd like for you to put those hands together as our mayor comes with the Mark Stanley Proclamation. Mayor Helmut Baba, the Honorable Mayor 
this great city in terms of Campbell. Peterson lineage. Family up here. 
There are four generations present. To my family, I thank each of you for sharing in this glorious moment and for asking me to represent the family. To everyone present, thank you for joining us for this commemorative moment in celebration of the legacy of Thomas Mundy Peterson. It was 152 years ago today that he made a life-changing decision that would not only change our family's lives, but he indirectly changed the lives of each and every one in this room. As I stand here and reflect on when I first learned of Thomas Mundy Peterson, it was through conversations with my cousins and they learned from their parents. At this point, I was already an adult. Ironically, we were never taught about him in American history classes in school. We were never told about the first African-American man who cast his ballot after the 15th Amendment was passed under the U.S. Constitution. What he did that day changed the trajectory of every African-American of his generation and beyond. Therefore, it is so imperative that we continue to speak his name, teach his name, and publicize his name. Because in that one moment, he taught all of us how to take risks to affect change. Thomas Mundy Peterson was born to a former slave named Lucy, who was an adult when she became a free woman. I can only imagine the sheer joy she experienced when she learned of her son's heroic moment. As you saw, March 31st, 1870 was definitely a different time. Slavery was newly abolished. And although Thomas Mundy Peterson was born free, his life as a black man was not without its challenges. He recognized that to have a voice, he would need to exercise his civic duty. He was involved in local politics and was a member of the Republican Party. Women, on the other hand, did not get the right to vote until the U.S. Constitution in uh, the, until 1920, after the 19th Amendment was passed, some 50 years later. Women of color were not immediately recognized at that time and still had to fight to vote. As a woman and a woman of color, I understand the value and importance of voting. My family, they too understand the value and importance of voting. And we will continue to teach each generation the importance of voting and to take full advantage of exercising their civic responsibility in order to inspire change. We do not take what this great man did for all of us would have it, black and brown people still have to fight to maintain their writing votes, since voter suppression is real. And just last week, we witnessed Judge Ketanji Brown Johnson. <laughs> testify before the Senate Constitu Confirmation Hearings Committee. Um, in her historic bid to serve as the first African-American female U.S. Supreme Court Justice. It is bittersweet that there are still so many firsts for African-Americans happening today. Progress is slow, and we, will still have, and we still have a long way to go, yet we will not stop striving. In closing, my family and I will always honor the legacy of Thomas Mundy Peterson. We know that we come from a great leader and that we too can make a difference, whether through our voice 
or through our actions. To the Per Fanboy community, Mr. Bo Gordon Barnes, Mr. John Dyke, Anna Daly, and everyone who had a part in today. We thank you for keeping Thomas Mundy Peterson's name alive. Thank you, God bless you, and continue to go. When a brave dare not go to right and right a wrong and to love pure and chaste from afar and to try though your arms are too weary to read the unreachable star. This is my quest to follow that star. No matter how hopeless, no matter how far, and to fight for the right without question or to be willing to march right into hell for a heavenly cause. And I know if I'll only stay true to the glorious quest, that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest and the world will be better for this oh, yeah. that one man scorned and scattered with star scars he still strove with his last ounce of courage to read Reverend Samuel Proctor from New York 
was teaching that class. And that was the first and only time I ever took a black history class. But I learned about Thomas Money Peterson. And I felt kind of stupid because he was from Perth Amboy, and so was I. And he's in the book. But how come it's no big deal? And that bothered me. And then when I learned that he was the custodian in number one school, I, I would pass that school every day, often. And I was on the Board of Education. And it bothered me. And God spoke to me one day and said, do something about it. And I went into the board office and I sat down with our superintendent, Frank Sinatra, and I said, I have a problem. I said, number one school, we need to do something about it. And I knew the history of this town because I was born here. And it wasn't an unusual thing to name schools after people of prominence in this town. The first school that my memory tells me was named, and this was even before I was born, was Samuel Lee Shell School. And others since then. So I sat down with Frank and I said, I really want to name, we ch change the name of number one school to Thomas Money Peterson School. And he looked at me and he said, why? I said, because he was the first black voter in the United States after the 15th Amendment was voted into law. In fact, March 30th, 1870, was when that law became a law. And coincidentally, the city of Perth Amboy had an election the next day. It wasn't an election where they were electing a president or a senator or anything like that. That election was an election for the city to change the charter. And I love this town, I really do. My classmates ask me all the time, why do you still live here? I say, because that's my Perth Amboy. When I say my Perth Amboy, I mean that I let the rest of y'all live here with me, but it's <laughs> my Perth Amboy. And I, I honor this town and the people in it. And especially because of what happened March 31st, 1870. Citizens in this town, men and women, knew that that law had been passed the day before. They took it upon themselves to seek out Thomas Money Peterson and ask him and encourage him to vote because we had an election that day and he didn't know about that election but this is my present boy the white people in this town came to a black man and said, you have the right to vote. Walk with us to City Hall so that you can pass your ballot. And that's why I stay in this town. Because growing up in this town, I never knew color 
I hear people say that, but when I say it, you better believe I mean it. I have never felt that I was different or lesser than. I've always felt welcomed and I've always felt a part of, and I honor that. article when we changed the name from number one school to Thomas Lenny Peterson School. And this is the picture of me with Thomas Lenny Peterson's photo in front of me. And this was on the front page of the Perth Amboy News Tribune. That's what we used to call it back then. <laughs> and I'm on the front page, and it's not because I'm getting out, uh, arrested. <laughs> I did something right this time. But I honor this because this was the first school in the city named for a black man. And if I don't do anything else right, at least I did that. I also honored the members of the Board of Education who when Frank and I presented this idea to them, they welcomed it. Nobody said, why? They all said, when? When Metuchen was part of Woodbridge, Woodbridge owned everything back then. <laughs> There's 10 cities in, in Woodbridge, and Metuchen would have been 11, but Metuchen then gained their own rights to have their own city. But that's where he was born. And he worked as the school custodian during the years of 1871 to 1877. Thank you, John Dyke. And um, on March 30th, as I said before, the 15th Amendment to the Constitution that allowed black men to vote. Women weren't given the vote till 50 years later. And Y'all may not know this, but the Indians weren't given the vote till way later after that. And this was their country. I am, am a member of the President Boy Housing Authority. I, I sit as chair of the board. And from time to time, I sit, oh, no, I also sit on the National Housing Authority in DC. And from time to time, I have to travel. And whenever I have to go to New Orleans, I'm delighted because I get to go to Xavier University. And that's where the medal is. Thomas Mundy Peterson's medal sits in the library at Xavier University in New Orleans. And I go there, whenever I have to go there, I always take a day to go visit the medal. And I made a friendship with Irving Blackhoff, who was the, um, the library custodian, the, the head of the library, the curator. And I explained to him what that medal meant to me because I was from Perth Amboy. And we had an ongoing relationship. We would talk on the phone from time to time. And when 
we decided as a board to rename the number one school and call Urban. And I said, I need something from you. Can you let me borrow the memory? <laughs> and a black woman knows how to talk to men. <laughs> And I assured him I would treasure this medal with my life. Well, we got the medal. That medal was right here for the opening and for the beginning of Thomas Money Peterson School. John Dyke took a picture of me holding that medal. I have that at home. And then, a few years later, we did a memorial of Thomas Money Peterson at St. Peter's Church. And I called Irving again. And I said, I need another paper. And he allowed us to have the medal again at the church. Now, he trusted me, but not that good. <laughs> it came under armed guard. Okay? Believe me, there were two guards standing on either side of me when we had the school renaming. And it was in some sort of a whatever. I don't even know how to call it, but it's some sort of a, a thing that you could see it, but you couldn't touch it when we had the, cer uh, the ceremony at the church. They, they made sure that they sent it here under guard, but I couldn't have it. It had to be in city hall. And, and the mayor and, and the people in city hall had it in a vault where, because God forbid something happened to this. But that medal's been here twice. And Irving's not there anymore. In fact, God rest his soul, he has passed on. But I hope that maybe someday we'll get it back here again. Because it's a small thing, no, not much bigger than that. But it is very special to us. Very, very important to the city of Perth Boy. And I always wish that we could get it uh, a copy of it made, but we never were able to get that done. Maybe one day. Um, I think y'all are tired, probably tired of hearing from me now. So I, I just want you to know that I treasure this town for what it stands for. I treasure the fact that we live together in peace and in harmony. I treasure the fact that the first black voter in the United States after the 15th Amendment lived here, voted here, and that means something to us. And I don't want you to walk away thinking, I did this for me. I did it for those kids in number one school, for them to know that they were special, that their building was special, that their building was important because the man that used to sweep the floors in their building and clean the desks in their building was the first voter in the United States who also happened to be black. We've learned a lot today. And the bottom line is, we cannot continue having the numbers that John talked about earlier in his presentation. The voting, the, the, the number of people who come out to vote has been very low. I want you all that are here not to be in that number, no. And I don't believe you are. Students who are of the age to vote, 
We want you to continue, continue knowing, and you heard it over and over again today, how very important it is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my little change of song here, Sydney, and 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 I want you all to sing it with me. Let everybody say. upon you and give you peace both now and evermore. Amen. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine how Thomas Monday Peterson would feel to be able to see this what he means to the city of Perth Amboy. This is truly wonderful. Uh, Mayor Kaba, thank you for the resolution that mentions Zion Thomas Lane because this is where when Thomas Monday Peterson when, when uh, Gail Hardy came out and told Thomas Bundy Peterson about the 15th of May. Bundy Peterson went home for lunch first. And he wasn't sure if he was going to vote yet because the regular election for the mayor and all that was coming off in another couple of days. But maybe he would wait for that one. So he went home and he thought about it and talked it over with his wife. And he made the decision over lunch on his way back to work to stop off in City Hall and to cast that historic vote. We know 
I wrote a book about Thomas Wendy Peterson. I have a table out there if anyone is interested. My commercial hint. Um, during the course of my research, I figured out where his house was. There, it is not there now, but there is an opportunity to do some archaeology, perhaps, to at least acknowledge the fact that the importance of this lot, what happened, the very human idea of this man over lunch deciding he's going to take this step. Our working can make things happen. The planning committee. John Kenny, Renee Skelton, Anna Daly, Dorothy Carter Daniels, the mayor's office, all, all of our presenters, and, and as I just mentioned, the New Jersey League of Women Voters. Gordon Bond just spoke. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Students, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Suffering 
faithful in adversity. Thank you, Lord. For all the valiant seekers after truth. We thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places. We thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Together we to him. pray. Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. 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 Amen. Th